winner. No second place for me. I'm a winner. I am number one. Second Corinthians 2.14. Thanks be to God who leads us in triumph in Christ, who manifests through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of him in every place I go. 1 Corinthians 15.57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 9.24. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives a prize? So run in such a way that you may win. Proverbs 11.30. The fruit of the righteousness is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. So it came about when Moses held his hand up that Israel prevailed, and when he let his hand down, Amalek prevailed. <laughs> Exodus 17, verse 11. Philippians 4, 23. If you have not memorized this scripture yet, write it down and memorize it. Philippians 4, 23. That's in the New Testament. <laughs> to give you a hint, Philippians 4, 23. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Can anybody say amen to that? 1 John, or I, John, as my grandmother said, 1 John 5, verses 4 and 5, everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? There's your plan. There's your key. You overcome by believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And everyone that is born of God, everyone who is born of God overcomes the world. You're a winner. You overcome the world because you're a born of God. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy 2, 5, an athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Colossians 2 or 3, uh, chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You serve the Lord Christ, Jesus Christ. Philippians 3, 14. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus. Now, there's some winning scriptures for you. Any one of those should make you a winner. You should be a winner right now. He even promises it to you. He promises, yeah, you may not be the winner of the race, but the thing that's important is running in the race according to the rules. And if you do run in the race, whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. And that way you will receive the inheritance that God promised you. Did you know every child receives an inheritance whether he wins the race or not? Come on, say amen. Uh, when a father leaves the stuff that behind, when he goes on, he leaves an inheritance to everyone in the family. Nobody's going to be left out. And this is the way your Jesus Christ has done. When he died, he left us an inheritance. Are you in the will? Amen. Are you in the will? I'm in the will. Hallelujah. When Jesus died, I was mentioned in the will. Amen. He left me an inheritance. And listen today, without question and without controversy, every Bible scholar and every teacher of the Holy Scripture knows that God has a divine plan. Did you know that? I have never met anybody who is a teacher of the Bible or a Bible scholar who will not tell you these same words. God has a divine plan for humanity. God has a plan for this world. God knew what he was doing when he created heaven and earth. God had a plan. 
You look at everything in this world right now. You can see the plan of God. Uh, 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 the plan of God. Uh, uh, it, uh, if you just study anything, it doesn't matter what you study. You can see plan. You can see design. You can see that somebody thought about this, and it was God who did this. God just didn't throw us down here and we're all just milling around. Amen. God had a plan in mind. Where uh, God just didn't put us here on this earth with nothing in mind. God did according to his own will and his own pleasure. If you say, well, I would have done this different. Well, you're not God. You can't do it different. God did it already. Yeah, you're not God. I'm not God. Dolly Parton said, get down off the cross. Somebody needs the wood. Hallelujah. In other words, what we're saying here is God made this world according to his plan. Not our plans. Nobody could design a better one. This is the world the way it is. It's God's plan. God had a plan for the universe. Then we also know that God must have a plan for each individual person. The plan of God starts out here and it comes all the way down to me. Amen. God has a plan. Uh, God has a plan for everybody that ever was, everybody that is, and everybody that will be. God's plan covers every one of us. Acts 22 verse 14. God hath chosen thee that thou shouldest know his will and see that just one and hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witnesses unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. In other words, that just one, uh, that Jesus Christ, that holy one, he had a plan for you. You should know his will. God's will is that you would know him. And that is the will of God concerning you. God has chosen you. Raise your hand up, whether you're a Christian or uh, no matter who you are walking on the face of this earth, raise your hand and say, God has chosen me. God has chosen me. You know, I, I, every man wants to throw in all kinds of other details. Well, are you going to church? Are you living right? Have you always been right? Have you, have, have you taken drugs? Have you not taken drugs? Or do you go to movies? Do you go to dances? Well, he, are, are you a straight or are you gay? A uh, man wants to throw everything in there. But I'm going to tell you right now, God has chosen you. God has chosen every one of us. We are fulfilling God's plan, not your plan. We're fulfilling, not the preacher's plan, not the Pope's plan. God is fulfilling his own plan, not the denomination plan. God is fulfilling, not the politician's plan. You want to see the politicians' plan? Go out here and look at Utica Road. They still don't know whether they're going to put a bike path in or not. They don't know what they're doing. They're just trying to get by. Amen. Like many people in this world. But in all of this whole wide world, God has chosen you. Do like this. Make a finger like this. Don't point it at nobody else. Point it at you. God has chosen me. God has chosen you to know his will. God has chosen you to obey his will. God has chosen you to hear his voice. It is God's will that you see him in all of his glory. It is God's plan for you to be powerful and strong in the name of Jesus. It's God's plan to send you forth into this world with the power and the authority of God's throne behind you. God is on your side. God is on my side. I'm a winner because I, it's not that uh, God's on my side. I, I, I'm a winner because I'm on God's side. Come on, say amen. Uh, God's not going to make me win because I love him. I'm on God's side, and God's side is going to win. God's plan is going to win in this world. God ordains you. Raise your hand and say, I am the you that it's talking to. Hallelujah. God ordains you to be a warrior, not a loser, a warrior. I'd like to give you a helmet with a little Viking horn sticking out here. You ought to go forth and conquer. God has given you power in the name of Jesus. Demons tremble when you say the name of Jesus. You are ordained of God. You are the chosen of God. You know God, and God knows you. 
Nothing can stand in the way of the man or woman who knows that God abides in them and they are called and they are acting according to God's divine purpose. Every Christian is called and prepared for a special work for God. It may not seem important to you what God has called you to do today, but I promise you that God has a plan. You don't know the plan. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I and none of the prophets on TV and radio and, and writing magazines and uh, running around Washington and running around Memphis, none of them know what God's uh, prophecies are. They don't know when they're going to happen. They don't know when they're going to come to pass. I know the end. I know that in the end, Jesus Christ is coming back, uh, coming back again as Savior of the whole world and King of the universe. I know that in my heart that that is true. Uh, this pro uh, the prophets of this day are going to have to change from their message and change to God's message. The message of God is sure. Uh, there's no hesitation. There's no wait. God's men must not be pushed off on some side road by the organizations of this world. God's men, God's women, you're ordained of God to speak his word. Don't let politics put you down. Don't, don't let what one says above another. Don't let that hinder you. You don't talk for the Republicans. You don't talk for the Democrats. You don't talk for the blacks. You don't talk for the whites. You don't talk for the Indians. You don't talk for the Chinese. You talk for God. You're ordained and anointed of God. Listen, my family never did nothing for me, but my Holy Ghost Father in heaven, he has ordained me. He has called me. He has chosen me. He has lifted me up. He's lifted you up. He's made you what you are right now. Not, not, the government didn't make you anything. The government owes me hundreds of thousands of dollars right now. And I'm going to have to live, and they'll only pay me a little bit of it a month. They took my money, and now they're saying, we're giving you social security. It ain't your money. It's my money. I put that money in there. You ain't giving me nothing. You only handing back what I already gave you. Come on, say amen. Don't let them lie to you. This is your money. I got news for the whole world right now. If you think you're losing, God is getting ready to bless you. If you think they've taken what's yours, God is getting ready to bless you. God said everything the devil has taken away from you, I will make him come back and restore it to you seven times. If you lost one house, God's going to give you seven houses. If you lost one car, God's going to give you seven cars. God's going to give it back to you, good measure, heaped up, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Everything you've lost, you ain't lost it. God has been holding it back here, multiplying it. And you know who he's going to make give it to you? This is good. Hallelujah. He's going to make the enemy that tried to take it away from you. God's going to make them give it back to you. He said, I will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. And who's going to serve you? It's going to be your enemy that's going to have to put the food on your plate. And they're going to have to turn around and say, can I get you some salt or some hot sauce? What is it that you want to go along with this? The devil is going to have to serve you. Your enemy is going to have to serve you. God is going to raise you up that way. Don't doubt it for a moment. You're the called of God. The world is not going to give it to you, but God is going to give it to you. Your enemies are not going to give it to you, but God's going to make your enemies be at peace with you, and they're going to command their blessing, their wealth. They're going to give it to God's people. God ordained that men, listen now, we're not chosen here to take the leftovers of this world feels that men have already gleaned and culled. God wants you to have your own. Amen. God uh, uh, wants you to be blessed as you come in and blessed as you go out. He wants to wake you up in the morning with blessing. He wants you to have joy all day long. Everything that you do, you need to be blessed by it. Everything that even the enemy wants to trip you up, God's going to change it around and make everything that's working bad against you to turn around and start working good for you. God has a way of doing that. 
You think you've lost? God is going to give you more than you ever had. The Word of God says, lift up your eyes and see. Some of you need to get on higher ground. Moses, you're down in the valley. If you want to see what I'm going to do for you, Abraham, you want to see what I'm going to do for you? Get up there on top of the mountain. From the top of the mountain, you can see the everything that I'm going to give into your hand. Climb on up a little bit higher in God. You getting discouraged where you are? Climb on up a little bit higher. You getting discouraged down in the valley? Well, he's the lily of the valley. Well, yeah, pick a lily. Now let's go to the top of the mountain. Come on, say amen. I, I want everything that God has for me. I want everything that God has for you. God has always found a man. God has always found a woman. God always raises up and equips men and women of his choosing to do his will and face every situation. God is going to raise you up right now. God is going to bless you right now. This is the day that the Lord has made. The time is running out for you to get your blessing. You may not believe that, but time is winding down. I believe that with my whole heart. The world can't stand much longer the way it is. It can't do it. Something has to happen. You get so far one way, and then all of a sudden that clock has to swing back the other way. Something's getting ready to happen right now. We've seen too much go wrong. Now God's getting ready to bless. You've been too down too long. Now God's going to lift you up. Hallelujah. When you swing too far left, then it starts swinging back right. When you go into poverty, then all of a sudden blessing follows that. God knows exactly what he's doing. God foresees and God foreknows everything that lies ahead in your life. Everything. My, the steps of a good man and a good woman are ordered by the Lord. God knows you're rising up and you're laying down. You're going in and you're coming out. He knows when your head hurts. Hallelujah. He knows your weight. He knows how many hairs on your head. He knows what you should be doing, and he knows what you do. Come on, say amen. God knows that, and in spite of all of that, God has his hand of blessing on you. God is going to bless you in spite of you. God is going to bless you to keep his word because God has uh, magnified his word even above his good name. God is not going to let his word come back void to him. Man, God has always had a man. God told one man to build an ark in the middle when it hadn't even rained yet. All of Noah's life, it hadn't even rained. Amen. Read the Bible. It tells you that. Uh, water came up from the depths and, and watered the land. Now, rain, what are you talking about? Rain, water falling out of the sky? Nobody believed that. But Noah prophesied and said it's going to rain. And I'm going to tell you, when it started raining, <laughs> the rain just start, didn't start dropping. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, the rain came down, and it lifted up the ark that he had built. God had a man uh, to save his family. God will use you to save yours. Abraham obeyed the voice of God and went into a land that was not his. Abraham uh, obeyed the voice of God and said, Come, come out from among them and be ye separate and go into the land that I shall give unto thee. That's what God told Abraham to do. And he got up and he left and he took his wife and Lot came following after him. But he went to do exactly what God had called him to do. And therefore you have a state of Israel today. Moses obeyed the voice of God and delivered the children of Israel out of bondage. You know that. God had a man. He had everything against him. Listen, he, had a, he was born in the wrong place. He was thrown into the river Nile. Uh, where they have crocodiles that are 22 and 25 feet long. That's from here all the way back to the steps back there. This is a long thing here. And, and he was in that water, and uh, the crocodiles were still there. And at that time around where they were, they had hippos and, and everything else, things that liked to eat things in baskets that were thrown as offerings into the water. And hallelujah, God led that little basket right down there to the foot of Pharaoh's sister. God knew what he was doing. No wonder Moses stammered and stuttered. You live a life like he lived, everything going against you. He couldn't even talk plain, but he didn't have to. I'm going to tell you right now, God gave Moses Aaron to speak for him. God gave you the Holy Ghost to speak for you. Come on, shout amen. 
God is going to let you speak his words. Hallelujah. Gideon. Oh, that's one of my favorite kind of guys in the Bible. <laughs> Gideon. You talk about a loser. There you go. Gideon was a real, he was a real nothing, nobody. He was hiding from the uh, Philistines. He didn't want to, uh, he, did, he would grow his crop out in a hidden valley and he had reap it out in the hidden valley and while he was out there on his thrashing floor one day hiding to make sure that they didn't come and steal his food the angel of the Lord came to him and said Gideon thou man of valor <laughs> and he said well, why, who are you talking to you, <laughs> you talking to me <laughs> amen <laughs> oh, thou mighty man of valor and he's like, you got the wrong guy here. You, you're, you got the wrong phone number. You, uh, it's a wrong email. I, it's a wrong Facebook, I, whatever it is. And he's saying, no, you got the wrong guy here. But can I tell you something? God knew he, who he wanted. And if God wants you, hallelujah, you can be hiding from the devil right now, running around trying to hide and cover up everything you do. Well, you better come out of that corner because you can't hide anymore. God is getting ready to bless you. God is getting ready to anoint you. God God is getting ready to raise you up. You're going to stand on mountains. You're going to do the word of God. You're going to be able to lead people forth. Hallelujah. David. Oh, do you like King David? I, I, I like him so much that even though all of the bad things he did. I still like him. Hallelujah. Hey, you, you, you start reading some of the things that David did and you wonder, how in the world could God use somebody like that? He couldn't pastor our church. Well, God didn't call him to be a pastor. God called him to lead the nation. Come on, say amen. <laughs> if, if you knew everything about my life, you probably wouldn't elect me to be pastor of the church. If I knew everything about you, I wouldn't even let you be a member. Come on, say amen. And so, thank God, God has it all under the blood. Hallelujah. God has taken care of everything. Thank God for God and thank God for the blood. David, even as bad as he was, the scripture has one thing to say about him that might be a key. It said he was a man after God's own heart because he was quick to repent. Hallelujah. Some of you need to learn a lesson like that. Some of you do stuff and you say, I ain't, I ain't sorry for that. Well, go ahead. Don't be sorry. Hallelujah. It's up to you. I want to be a man like David. Hallelujah. I want to have my little slingshot and I want to put it in a frame up on the wall and say, see that? That's what I killed that giant with. Come on, church. You need to say amen here. You need to let God use you, not with weapons of warfare, but with the weapons that God gives you. What has God given you to use? Hallelujah. Whatever it is, you need to get it out. If it's a slingshot, you need to start slinging it. Hallelujah. Whatever God has given. If it's singing, you better start singing. Don't give me no excuses no more. Get, in the, get up here on this stage and sing. If it's preaching, you better get to preaching. Hallelujah. You better stop criticizing and you better start preaching. Somebody shout amen. Am I preaching right? Hallelujah. If you don't like the way things are going, get in here and change them. A.A. Yeah. Yeah. Allen used to say, I like the way I'm doing it a lot better than I like the way you're not doing it. <laughs> Write that down. Think about that later. Hallelujah. I like what I'm doing a lot better than I like the way what you're not doing. Come on, say amen. He got a lot of criticism. Elijah and Elisha. I kind of like those two guys too. Hallelujah. Elijah was a mean prophet. Yes, he was. Not very many people can just call bears out of the woods. <laughs> and they're making fun of me because I ain't got no hair on my head. Bears, come on out here and eat them. I don't think that'd be politically correct. I don't think they tell that story in Sunday school anymore. But I'm going to tell you, you got to fear a man of God. The devil fears a man of God. The devil fears a woman of God. You don't do what God wants done. He'll go out there and call fire down out of heaven on your head. Woo, hallelujah. I've been on that mountain. I've, uh, from one, you know, Carmel's not a little mountain. Carmel starts here in the valley of Jezreel or, Arm, or near Megiddo. 
Megiddo, and it goes all the way to Haifa. It's a long mountain. I don't know where this happened at, but I'm going to tell you something. When Elijah prayed, the fire of God came down out of heaven and consumed them all. And what about Elijah? <laughs> Rude. He was not even courteous to those prophets of, of Allah or Baal. He wasn't even kind to them. Same God, same prophet. Uh, read your Bible, study something. Hallelujah. They worshiped the black stone back then, which is Allah, uh, the God that Muhammad worshiped. Uh, you go back and study it right now. It's right, I mean, it's uh, right there in history books. This is the same God. And, you know, he made fun of them. When they were out there praying that uh, uh, their God, Baal, would send uh, fire down out of heaven, they cut themselves and they screamed. And Elijah, he made fun of them. Uh, you still have that living Bible that I gave you? Uh, you, you ought to look it up in there. It, I mean, it's really graphic. Elijah, he wasn't kind to them. He said, where is your God anyway? Has he gone on a journey? Is he off sitting on, on the commode somewhere? Where is your God? Hallelujah. He actually said that. Uh, you need to understand something here. Uh, when you have God on your side, you don't give regard. You're not, you don't have to be courteous to the devil. You don't have to say, come out of there, my friend. He ain't your friend. Hallelujah. You have to cast out the devil. You have to take authority. You have to stand up. You have to have power. You have to have authority. You have to be what God has called you to be. You have to have the anointing of God. You have to let God get on the inside of you. And if you don't know what to say, start speaking in tongues and let the Holy Ghost take over on the inside of you. Well, hallelujah. That one may not go over good, but there it is. Hallelujah. Daniel, <laughs> Daniel was quite a guy. Daniel was taken as a kid out of Jerusalem as a, a, a one of the, the, uh, the tribe of uh, 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 of uh, Judah and taken to Babylon and trained trained by them to be a, a, a helper a prophet a, a servant in the house of their God can I tell you something their God is not a real God Daniel stayed true to the promises of God and God raised him up and multiplied him and blessed him and did good to him as God will you listen he lived right in the midst of paganism I have people all the time saying, oh, there's paganism coming in. What, has anybody been alive for 70 years that I know about? Paganism has been in this country since I got here. You say, well, we didn't know about it. You do a lot of pagan things in most of the Christian churches. We're steeped in paganism. All, kind, uh, all kinds of paganism all around us right now. But that didn't bother Daniel. Daniel still prayed morning, noon, and night. The angel of the Lord still came and witnessed to him right there in a pagan land. Hold on to God. Hold on to your hat. Hallelujah. Hold on to your hair. Hallelujah. God is going to do the same thing right now. I'm not afraid of pagans. Hallelujah. Because I can get all my... They said, don't pray in school. Well, you don't have to pray out loud. You don't have to get up on, a, on the desk and say, I'm praying now. Everybody be quiet. Hallelujah. You can have your kids pray in school and nobody even has to hear them. But God... Come on, say amen. And besides, I don't want some teacher who don't believe in God and believes in evolution that we come from monkeys. I don't want them up there trying to lead my children in prayer. That's just me talking right now. I don't want politicians leading in prayer. Why are they doing it? Well, Brother Ross, they, they got a right to pray. Yeah, but they ain't got a right to lead nobody else. They need to pray themselves. You know what kind of man and woman they are if they're in politics. Come on, say amen. What you got, well, you say, Brother Ross, preachers are the same way. It's okay. Preachers are the same way. But can I tell you something? How does that hinder your prayers? If everybody's a devil, how's that going to hinder you? If everything's against you, how's that going to stop you? If nobody believes, does that change the faith of God that you have in your heart? I ain't looking for what other people are going to do. I'm looking for what I'm going to do for God. You have to get a hold of God for yourself and obey God and follow after his lead. Uh, God demands several things. Obedience and action. You don't show your obedience by saying, yeah, I agree with that. You should be clicking like on Facebook. That ain't showing obedience. Obedience is getting up and doing something. 
Hallelujah. Obedience is doing what God tells you to do. God had men with determination, women with determination that would accept any challenge that came before them and not run off into the mountains to hide. They did not waver. They did not turn aside. They did not think about what would happen if I lose. Hallelujah. Their heart and their soul and their mind and their body was toward ultimate victory. I want to change your mind here today. Whatever is set against you, ignore it all. Ignore everything against you. It was nailed to the cross. Everything, every ordinance of man, anything that they do, how is it going to change your faith that you have in God? Believe in God. Hold to his hand. Trust in his word. God chose men that wanted to be men and women of honor. They wanted to keep their word. They wanted to do what God told them to do. He chose men that were willing to conquer, men and women that were willing to overcome, men who presented, represented Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know many preachers that represent Jesus anymore. I don't even think I'm worthy to do it. But I'm going to tell you one thing. Jesus is worthy. Hallelujah. If you don't like me, like him, because he's all right. Hallelujah. Now God chose you to take over in this world. You are the children of God. You are the inheritors of this world. God has it all for us and all for you. Don't get discouraged if the whole world doesn't get on your bandwagon. If everybody doesn't agree with you, don't get discouraged by that. Don't worry if your best friends don't agree with you. You know, I saw a picture of my best friend through junior high school and high school. Uh, we were explorers of America. We, uh, we took trips together. We explored caves. We explored rivers. Uh, uh, we, uh, I, uh, he talked me into beaching the, our Air Force raft before we went over the Cumberland Falls. He said, we got to get off here. I said, I want to go on. He said, we're going to go over the falls. And he, and he said, well, no, we don't want to go over the falls. I'm glad I listened to him. Amen. <laughs> it was only 45 feet high. But after I got down on the bottom side of it and looked at it, I was glad I didn't go over the falls. Hallelujah. I wanted to. But the thing, we did all of this. I looked at him, and I, uh, uh, he sent me a, a, a notification on Facebook. And I looked at his picture, and I thought of all that has happened in our lives. We started out here, and we went this way. Hallelujah. I became a servant of God. He, he made a wonderful career. He became not just a successful geologist. He taught geology. He found gases that nobody had discovered before. Uh, uh, you, uh, you probably heard about it. Gases that are released that can't be smelled or seen or lit or felt. Nothing. They come out during earthquakes. He discovered them. And uh, his name is in books right now. But you know something, child of God? Uh, uh, he didn't get the call. Instead of choosing the smartest one, because they're a lot smarter than me. Instead of choosing the smartest one, God, God chose me. You think God ain't got a sense of humor? Come on, say amen. You, you think God doesn't sit up there and, and just sometimes slap his knee laughing at us? I believe he does. Look, he, he chooses you who can't do it to make you do it. Hallelujah. He chooses the one who ain't able because he's able. Come on, say amen here, church. Don't, st don't sit around telling me I can't do it. I ain't got I no tangled dinero. I ain't got no money. I ain't got no ed education. God doesn't seem to care. Hallelujah. God has chosen the things that the world despises. And if you, you can get all the money there is. You can become the richest man in New York City. And half the world will still despise you. <laughs> Come on, church. You need to shout amen on that one. Huh? You and I, you, money ain't going to buy you respect. Amen. You, you ought to go back and listen to Aretha sing. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Hallelujah. <laughs> Find out what it do for me. Hallelujah. <laughs> it wasn't when, when, you need, when you want respect, you ain't going to get it. So forget about it. Don't, don't live to get respect. What you need to live for is to do the will of God. Jesus called 12 men, and one of them was a the devil. That's what the Bible says. Huh? Jesus chose 12. 
and they, uh, he didn't choose any leaders of the temple. He didn't choose people that had lots of wealth and lots of money. Most of them were humble men. They were like fishermen. Uh, one was a tax collector. He chose men that uh, uh, weren't all, uh, the highest level of esteem in society. And when Jesus went into a town, listen, I know some of you are going to get upset about this, but listen to me and, and read what the Bible does say. Jesus didn't go into the leaders of the city and try to win the rich people for God. Jesus hung around in the bars. They said he's hanging around with the wrong crowd. He's hanging around with drunkards and wine bibbers. He sweeps the gutter for his followers. Well, I'm going to tell you something right now. I know one God. I know one Savior. I know a Jesus can make the wine oh push that cup away and throw his drug pipe away. I know somebody that'll pick you up out of the gutter, dress you up, shave you, get that smell of puke off of you and that smell of poor, and he can set you down among princes to witness to God and for your calling in Jesus Christ. That's what God does. God wants to lift you up. He wants to raise you up right now. Where you are right now, don't think this is the end of your life. This is where God can take you today and make what he wants to out of you. I wish somebody shout amen on that. It was God's will to find these men, and God won that one. He couldn't have found better men, hallelujah, than the ones that he found who were faithful unto death, who are willing to... Listen, I, 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 I got... Think, things get, will prey on my mind. I'm almost through now. Things prey on my mind. I want to ask you, if this was all a lie, if Jesus had 12 men, one of them was a devil who betrayed him, but the other 11, if this was a lie, if Jesus did not raise from the dead, if Jesus did not give them the Holy Ghost, do you, has anybody ever told a lie? Raise your hand, and if you don't raise your hand, you're a liar. <laughs> you're all liars, amen. <laughs> well, I got news for you right now. I have told a lie or two. I have told some whoppers. I've told a lie, but you know something? <laughs> I remember when my mom caught me in a lie once. She said, Ross, why are you lying? Well, you know what I did? I knew I was caught. So I said, well, yeah, you caught me. I'm sorry, I didn't, didn't know. But these men, when they were caught, they didn't change their story. They were willing to be beheaded. They were willing to be nailed on a cross. They were willing to be thrust through with spears. They were willing to be beaten and stoned. Now, what kind of a man, if it's for a lie... Why would they be faithful unto death? Well, the truth is, and this is the truth, they did see Jesus raised from the dead. They talked to a walking dead man. They talked to somebody they saw crucified. They saw, somebody, they, they saw him alive. And when on the day of Pentecost, this is why I want to encourage every man and woman and boy and girl and grandma and grandpa and your neighbors and everybody else, get filled with the Holy Ghost. When Jesus filled them with the Holy Ghost, they didn't hide anymore. Instead, they came right out and they were witnesses unto the Lord. Raise your hands up to the Lord right now and let's believe God. Hallelujah. Let's believe God. I know God is able. I know his word is true. I know what God can, it is no secret what God can do. I know God can do something for you right now. And he can change your life. He is a miracle working God. A miracle, miracle, miracle working God. Father, I ask you right now. I'm going to point to a few people, and you just stand up. Stand up, Patricia. I got a word from the Lord for you. Stand up, Carol. I got a word from the Lord for you. God was speaking to me this morning. Hallelujah. My two sisters over there, Marguerite and Eva, 
you stand up. I have a word from the Lord for you. Sister, Sister Gaddis, you stand up also. I have a word from the Lord for you. Uh, Victor, I have a word from the Lord for you. You have to stick with me now this morning because I'm going to move fast a little bit. Hallelujah. God is able. God is able. I have a word from the Lord for you today. You stand up also. Everybody keep your mind on God. Hallelujah. This is the Lord. He said, well, you don't minister like this very often. Well, Brother Ross, uh, sometimes I just do what the Lord tells me to do. Hallelujah. You don't have to worry. All the money that you have lost is going to be restored to you. God is even going to give you back the money you had to pay for medical expenses. God is going to open, huh? What? Praise the Lord. Hey, would that be a surprise? Yes. Would that be a miracle? Yes. Miracle. Oh, that's what I'm asking for. I'm, I'm praying for a miracle here today. It's getting ready to come upon you. You're going to see this happen, and you're going to come back here and mark the chair because you're going to sit in the same chair when you got a testimony to say, God has given me back everything. It's been restored to me more than what I thought. The money that you lost, people that are coming against you right now, people want to sue. People want to do all kinds of stuff. God is going to turn that around. They're going to come to you and say, Sorry we bothered you. <laughs> we know this isn't your fault. You, we can, you can't do it. You can't even pay this anyhow. They're going to look at you and say, well, she ain't got enough money to pay it anyhow. Why are we, why are we spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to prosecute this woman? You're going to be set free. Now, you can say bye-bye debts, bye-bye bills, bye-bye lawyers, <laughs> bye-bye teachers, bye-bye books, hallelujah. All of their dirty looks, you're going to be free of all of it. God's going to do it for you. Somebody shout amen. I agree in the name of Jesus, and it shall be done. Hallelujah. I don't know. You may have more than one house. God told me that he is going to give you money in your hand uh, to pay it off completely. Everything's going to be paid off, paid in full, stamped, paid in full. You're going to wonder how it's done. Also, people in your family, people that you love, uh, God is going to give you power to deal with them. Sometimes they just don't listen to you. You tell them the right thing and they don't listen anyhow. But now God's going to give your words with power. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost anointing is coming upon you right now. In the name of Jesus, somebody clap your hands and praise the Lord. I thought I had somebody here. Hallelujah. Victor, raise both hands up to the Lord. I know, I feel, I sense this. Uh, I got good news for you. You are not bound by any form of witchcraft. All of their working against you has come to nothing. Instead, they're not hindering anymore. They can't hinder your finances. They can't hinder your family. They cannot hinder your ministry. God is getting ready to open up a new treasure and a new blessing unto you, and I ask you to receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Dear, hallelujah, I want you to believe one thing that I'm saying to you right now. The difficulty that has separated you and members of your family, God is going to bring it to an end. They're going to come back and they're going to embrace you. They're going to love you. They're going to accept you and they're going to promote you. You're going to be the one, hallelujah, that God wants. I, I got to come back and touch you on that one because I want to, everybody to know I'm responsible for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is going to do it in your life. And uh, right now, the Lord told me to tell you that your strength is going to come into your body. You're going to become stronger every day from this very moment. Uh, all of these little things that are compiling and building up in your body, God heals you here today. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, I, I've, I've been around for a long time. I have never met two sweeter people than you and your sister. You just have a special blessing of God on your life. You, re you received this, you inherited this uh, from your father who was a very loving and kind and a holy man. And you have to understand something, that all things are of God and God knows exactly what he's doing. The Lord wants to take all of this hurt out of your heart right now and the only way he can do that is you have to give it to him. You have to surrender it to the Lord. You have to surrender this hurt right now because God has much for both of you to do. 
Don't worry. God's going to bless you. Lord, take all of this hurt. Lord, we're not removing the good memories, but take the hurt away, the sting of hurt. You said that you would do that, Lord. I ask you to do it now. Lord, I ask you to touch right now. Touch right now in the name of Jesus and take this hurt and this pain away in the name of Jesus. Lord, in those lonely hours, I ask you to come in and take hold of their life. Jesus, you be with them. You become father to them. In the name of Jesus, we ask it now. And let that happen from this very day forward. Lay your hand upon them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let them not worry and prosper them in all that they do. Use them, Lord, to dedicate them, God, today to be effective witnesses for you in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Hi. Huh? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You've been... <laughs> It go to way down home. I got a statement saying for you. You've been pulling a long train. Amen. <laughs> You've been holding on, and it seems like sometimes everything around you is falling apart. But don't worry about it. God's going to step in. God has His hand upon you. You're the child of God. You are chosen of God to do His work and His will. You will do what God has called you to do. Even. It may seem a little hard at first, but you will do. You will be what God has called you to be. In your family, God is raising up two prophets, hallelujah, besides you, because you're going to receive a prophet's ministry. You're going to call those things that are not as though they are. You believe me? Halle, huh? What would you say? Amen. Amen. I believe it right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I ask you to start stamping bills paid in full so she doesn't worry about these things anymore. In the name of Jesus, for your glory, Lord. Amen and amen. amen. Everybody clap your hands and praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say praise God. Today is Communion Sunday. Uh, 